Hi everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you guys know, I love reviewing cars using my engineering knowledge or insight. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today using a new review format, which utilizes five critical factors, including quality, engineering, performance, and driving feel. So I'm gonna use that template in a second here for this 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe Hybrid. Now, I already did a review on the normal gasoline version of the Santa Fe, so take a look at that if you haven't done so yet. But this week I want to focus on this particular model, which is a Santa Fe with a hybrid system. So let's go and use that new template, a new review format, so you can know for sure whether this is something you want to buy. Let's go. Welcome back. So once again, I'm going to use a new review format, which will go through five critical factors. The first one is quality, both for exterior and interior. And I'm also going to give it a number, some kind of ranking, and we'll go through the whole thing so you'll know for sure if this is a car that's worth buying. So my first criteria is the exterior quality. I'm gonna do my usual check with my uh, gaps. This one is built in Korea. You can see the K in the first uh, letter of the VIN. But the quality actually, as you may or may not know, is actually really good coming out of Korean factories. So you can see that here, 3.1 millimeter, 3.2, 3.1, a little bit wider here, which is often the case in the middle with 3.4 and 3.3 millimeter here. So that's actually very close to, or even better than some of the Toyota cars. For example, it's better than the Highlander model, which is built in Princeton, Indiana and actually not too far off from the 4Runner or Lexus GX because they're all around three millimeters, maybe 3.1. And then even if you compare it to like a Honda Pilot, it's way better because Honda Pilot is neighboring between 3.5 and four millimeters. So gaps are really good. Alignment is excellent. You can see like these lines are pretty hard to match. Uh, and uh, you know what? I'm surprised the designers and engineers decided to do that because the more crease they are, the more difficult in manufacturing, but everything matches up. This one over here, this is tricky stuff here because this one has to line up and this has to stay flush. But you know what? It looks as good as something I'll see in out of Japan. Although I see a little bit of warpage here, but it's not so bad. Still some orange peel as you will see in many Asian product. Okay, what about in terms of a paint quality? Well, let's check the paint thickness first. 128 microns. These are all in microns. 99.8 for the front fender. 100 and one more 99.7 so about 100 a little bit thicker in the hood side so that's about the same as typical japanese product uh, even toyota these days are about 100 mazda honda or about 100 120 i would like to see it in a kind of 120 micron thickness just so that there's kind of extra thickness of the clear coat and that will protect it from the uh, outside debris and so forth uh, but 100 micron is acceptable maybe not great so overall i would say the exterior quality is excellent in terms of panel fit and panel alignment and pretty good with the paint but could be better if the thickness was better but in terms of quality of the paint it looks really good so i'm going to give it a solid 4.0 for exterior quality now let's take a look at the inside and see how the quality is okay so now i'm inside the santa fe hybrid how is the quality? And I will also talk about the engineering a little bit later on in the second criteria. But in terms of the quality, well, first of all, I want to point out that thankfully, Hyundai has decided to use soft materials everywhere. Whereas in some of the newer Toyota models, they all moved to hard plastic, like on the dash and on the door, which is something I don't like. But here, really high quality finish, even A pillar here as well. Good quality all the way around. I'm looking at the texture, the piano black, the plastic molding, and then most of all, I tried to look for these gaps between the parts to see how they fit, but everything looks tight. I mean, they have a really smart engineers at Hyundai. Many of them came from German automakers. So what they've done is to cleverly design it so that things are not as obvious in terms of how the parts are fitting. So, and again, I'll talk about that a little bit later on, but the overall quality of the materials are really good. The stitching is good here. And actually these are fake stitching, but they look almost real. So again, I'm gonna give a solid 4.0 for interior quality because nothing is loose when I do this. And the fit and finish looks fantastic. In fact, it looks better than some Honda and Toyota models. Maybe Mazda is still a little bit above this just because I see really tight tolerances on Mazda, but definitely it deserves 4.0. So now I'm back outside, I'm going to talk about the second criteria, which is 
design and engineering. So I'm going to talk about the design a little bit, but also whether engineers have really thought about how to design the exterior so that it's beautiful, innovative, but also well-made. And so a couple of things I want to point out is that if you just look at it from afar, then it does have the Defender look, maybe closest to Defender 130, which is a extended bed version. So you have that kind of all glass look over here. And if you actually open the door, you'll notice that this is glass. And instead of filling this with the plastic, this is also glass. It goes right to the edge. This is plastic and back to glass. So when you close it, this whole thing looks like a one piece, which is very innovative. Not many, too many companies will do something like this, but it has that very much of a defender look over here. And the front as well, I know some people were joking that it looks like a Ford Flex from many decades ago. I don't think so. I still think it looks kind of like a, a modernized version of Land Rover Defender. It does have that some of that vibe, but it's unique to Hyundai and they talked about how this is an H design here on the other side as well. Because I spent a fair amount of time talking to the chief designer of the Santa Fe back at the LA Auto Show and he described all of these interesting reasoning that uh, allowed this design to come forth. And also at the back, they talked about how this vehicle is really created to focus on the rear in a sense that they want to maximize the space, maximize the availability of uh, people to do something at the back. So they wanted this opening to be big, very welcoming, almost to the point where you can kind of have a, a party at the back here, tailgate party, I guess. So I think that's quite unique as well, but I will admit, Despite the fact that the rear design is unique and maybe innovative, I just don't like the design. It looks odd with this tail lamp at the bottom here, another one over here. And also, if you look carefully, this goes right to the edge. So if you just happen to have a simple uh, rear fender bender, it's gonna crack this. So I don't think that's a good idea to have a wrap around here as well. So those are probably not the best engineering solutions for cost reasons if you get into a minor fender bender. But otherwise, the exterior design from this part forward is beautiful. So I'm going to give it a 3.9 for exterior engineering and design because I like the over design, but there's a bit of an awkwardness in the back. And there's a few things they did that makes me think they haven't thought about how to deal with uh, minor fender benders. So those are some of the comments I have. Now let's go back inside and see how good the engineering is. So I'm back inside now and you know what? I like holding this. I'm always holding this to point things out. So I hope you don't mind. But now I'm gonna talk about the engineering of the interior. And this is perhaps where Hyundai really, really outshines the competitors, especially Toyota and maybe even Honda and Mazda as well, because the design is beautiful, but it's also very functional. You got this kind of curved design. So this is kind of facing toward me, big, beautiful and bold infotainment system that's also mixed in with the digital cluster here. A mixture of uh, different materials, some gloss black, but not too much, two full pads for the wireless charging, and they clearly mark exactly what these USB chargings do. This one is only for charging, this one is for connectivity, and everything else is really well designed. The power window switch is right here, and then the grab handles here. If you notice on some of the newer models, sometimes the grab handles is over here, or the power window switch is too far out in the front, but this is very functional. And then you get a nice big center console here, as well as kind of this tiered design, which, which means you can also put something on the bottom. And the big knobs and a knob for audio as well. So all the buttons are pretty well there. I'm not too crazy about this part here because I wanted everything to be a button, but it's actually quite responsive and quite fast as well. Uh, and then you get dual paying system here because it's got a pretty long um, body here. So this one opens up, the back one does not open up, but still you get a nice airy feel. So overall, I would say the engineer is excellent. Perhaps the best part of the Santa Fe is the interior. I give it a solid 4.3 because this is almost a benchmark. This is as good as it's going to get in terms of design engineering. Uh, and I really like the interior. Okay, so now I'm on the road with the Santa Fe. And the next criteria in terms of my engineering review is performance. And it covers two main topics. One is handling and the other one is powertrain, which is to do with engine and overall drivetrain. So first is handling. And this is a tricky one because you kind of have to figure out who the audience is. The type of people who buy this three row SUV are not looking for superb handling or high performing steering feel. 
They're just looking for something comfortable, practical, and easy to drive. And that is exactly what the Santa Fe offers. And it's very comfortable. And everyone who's been in it said, wow, this thing is quiet and really comfortable. But in terms of the steering feel and handling, it is definitely lacking because it has a very light steering with almost no feel at all. There's kind of absence of uh, road feedback coming from the road into my hands. And in terms of handling, it stays pretty agile and flat around the corners, but it is definitely on the softer side, which of course results in a softer ride. But if I take a turn like this a little bit fast, it's reasonable and stays flat, so it's acceptable, but I wouldn't say it's the best in class. I would say something like um, a Honda Pilot or Mazda CX-70, CX-90 definitely have better handling and better steering characteristic. So I'm going to have to give it like a 3.5 for handling. So it's acceptable and better than the average for sure, but not exceptional. And I especially don't like the fact that the steering is too light with no feedback at all. What about in terms of powertrain? Well, that's where things get a little bit better, but even though it's a small displacement engine of 1.6 liters with a hybrid system, it has a decent 231 horsepower. Not that much less than the gasoline version of the Santa Fe. Now, I would say that when I step on it, it's not super fast or super quick, but it's more than sufficient for everyday drive. So if I step on the gas like this, yeah, actually it feels pretty peppy. And they designed it so the hybrid system and the electric motor kicks in a little bit earlier. So combined together, you get a pretty brisk acceleration. So I think the powertrain is smooth. And even though Toyota is best known for hybrid system, I found this system to be really, really solid very quiet very smooth you can't really tell if the motor is kicking in or engine is kicking in the, the two are simultaneously working together in a very smooth fashion and it feels very natural so i'm going to give it a very solid 3.9 for powertrain because he has a good acceleration um, but especially because he has a really smooth transitioning working with the electric motor with the gasoline engine the fourth category is called road feel and it's divided into two again. One is a ride characteristic and the second one is NVH which stands for noise, vibration and harshness. And I would say the Honda engineers really focused on these two criteria because it is exceptional. This thing is really quiet. I had a, a $200,000 Range Rover last week and uh, you know what, this is not that much off from that one in terms of quietness and refinement and noise level is a really, really smooth transitioning of the electric motor working with gasoline power, and it's absolutely solid. So I would say in terms of overall ride and the suspension design is excellent, I give it a solid 4.1 because it is smooth, and even over bumpy road, it stays extremely controlled and manageable. And NVH, maybe even better, I'm gonna give it 4.3 because it's one of the quietest SUV I've driven. It is absolutely silent in here. I don't hear road noise. I purposely drove my car very close to a very busy traffic in front of me, which you can't see right now. And I can barely hear their noise level coming through as well, which, which means they did a great job with the insulation of the glass and the overall interior. This thing is super quiet, so NVH is excellent. So after all, what do I really think about Santa Fe? And is this something I would buy? Well, actually, if you compare this directly to, let's say, a Toyota Highlander or let's say a Honda Pilot, then there's a lot going for the Santa Fe. You have a beautiful design that's very modern, very unique and different. You get thumbs up when I drive this vehicle on the, on the road and you get lots of features for the money. So you guys probably know that Hyundai doesn't price their vehicles really low anymore like they used to 10, 20 years ago. But what they do is provide maybe more features for about the same price as its competitors. So you definitely do get more standard equipment on the Santa Fe compared to, let's say, a Highlander or a Pilot. But most of all, you get some of the more modern technology, including the very vast uh, infotainment system that's mixed in with a digital cluster and looks gorgeous from inside, but also looks gorgeous from outside. It's also very practical, lots of space, and therefore is very functional as well. So is this something I would buy? Well, if I'm just looking at it from a, let's say, a shorter term perspective, for example, three to five years of ownership, this is definitely better than most of its competitors because it offers more value for the money. So I give it a really good, solid, 4.1 out of 5 for the value but where the Hyundai might suffer or struggle a little bit is in the resale value 
where Honda and Toyota really shine. So for example, a three-year-old Highlander or a Honda Pilot will do really well on the resale market, where the Santa Fe will depreciate like a normal car over that same period. So I would say uh, in terms of resale value, it's probably not super promising. I only give it about 3.0, not because there's anything wrong with uh, Santa Fe, but just because the name Hyundai still needs a bit of a boosting in terms of image and in terms of recognition. And that is yet to come, even though it's improved a lot over the last 10 years. So that was my final concluding remarks about the Santa Fe. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, would you kindly subscribe as well? Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.